speakers out of ammo crates but this time I decided that I wanted to make speakers out of 3D printed designs because I thought that especially for the clubhouse network I'm sure that most clubhouses would have some kind of 3D printer and, and an internet connection which is all you really need now to get started to make your own set of speakers or sound systems Basically, I made my own sound system. I downloaded Guppy's files off the universe, followed their instructions. I then bought the speakers off eBay, although you can use any four inch drivers that you like. I did have a look at pulling some old speakers apart and using their four inch drivers. However, the, these ones that I found weren't that expensive and were far greater quality than the ones that you find on normal second-hand commercial old speaker systems. I do recommend reusing and upcycling old materials, pulling apart, you know, old speakers that you find at home, that kind of thing, or they get donated, or that you find at a knob shop, or even a tip shop, or something like that. Um, please try and reuse, reduce, recycle in this world. We really need to start doing that. Also, it's a lot cheaper if you do that. However, I wanted to go for a really quality sound and I realised a little bit of research on eBay and I could find some really quality drivers for not very much at all. I would have spent around $90 in materials including the wood PLA filament which is actually a really good quality filament. Um, I really recommend it. The wood PLA is so nice to work with. No dramas, very, very few fail rates lot less fail rates than using any other filament that I've ever used really. Feels great, looks amazing and you can paint it, it so you can use Posca pens on it, you can use Sharpies on it, you can just paint it with acrylic paints, whatever spray painter and it just takes the paint really well. So this is naked, I haven't painted it, I really like the naked look of it, um, just plain. I also do a little bit of decorations on the sub using the Cricut cutter and I've kind of in this video quickly shown you a little bit also about how I did that. Um, I also use the Cricut machine to do that just to give you an example because I'm sure that most people, most clubhouses around will have some kind of vinyl cutter or if not a Cricut machine because they're becoming cheaper and cheaper all the time now. 
This is a 2.1 amp. I bought um, the sound board of Guppy's instructions, and everything is, else is 3D printed the case, the knobs, everything like that. I decided to print three different styles of speaker because I really liked what Guppy was showcasing in their designs in terms of speaker design and sound design and audio design and it just really makes a small driver sound incredibly good um, and it's all down to the enclosure design and the enclosure design is so important when I started building speakers the first time I built it uh, speaker enclosure was car audio 6x9 speaker and I just built a box roughly to the dimensions that I googled up on Google and slapped the speaker in and screwed it in and sold the thing and then away I went and it sounded okay um, but then I, when I started researching more about speaker enclosure design I realised that you could make it sound from okay to make it sound awesome by the, by the design of the enclosure and the way that that sound is manipulated throughout the enclosure and the box, the speaker box. The really cool and exciting thing about 3D speakers is that um, you don't have to be have square shapes inside. So when you see this one, you can see that the really nice, beautiful, wavy maze shape, which is also a, a space saving device so if you make a wavy it means that, that your box doesn't have to be this high it can be shorter and so you save your space that's why i chose these designs they've got very interesting design elements to them and they both sound slightly different and operate slightly different ways this one i found really interesting because of its thin profile, it's flat and the horn comes out the side but it's designed, it's got a little hole in the back there so that you can hang it on your wall and I found that this speaker spreads out it fills a wide space so this is really good if you want it just a bit of ambient sound in your lounge room or your kitchen or something when you're cooking, that kind of thing, or in your bedroom or something like that. This one and this one, both of these are quite or very directional. So these are really good as computer speakers, maybe as monitors if you're editing, editing sound or editing movies, or, um, or if you're by yourself and you're watching a movie by yourself without friends, you can you can line up you in the middle with the speakers pointing straight at you and it'll sound absolutely fantastic like that. Whereas if you've got a shared space and you've got like a few people in there that you want to share music with, um, then this is the go and it looks absolutely gorgeous as well. When you look inside this one, if you take off the lid inside there, it's shaped like a spiral looks like a snail inside there. It also looks a little bit like a shell or it also reminds me a lot of the cochlea in the ear, the way that the ear canal is designed, the way that it channels sound and you know, makes sound and changes it inside the ear and the way that it channels it down. And this one of course is incredibly interesting because it's a ball, it's a sphere. And spheres really nice acoustically. Traditionally, they were really hard to make before 3D printers and technology can pro progress like that because uh, it was hard to make a round thing easily. It was hard to make a round sphere exactly the right diameter and shape and things like that to really make the most of the speaker. But now that we've got things like 3D printers, we can make these shapes, which really takes speaker design to a whole new level. But once upon a time, if you wanted a round speaker like this, a sphere speaker like this, you were talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a pair or even one of these kind of round speakers. Only people who were 
really into audio production and things like that who, or who had a lot of money could afford to have these. That's why most people generally typically have had square speakers or speakers out of boxes because they're a lot cheaper and easier to make and design. But now because more and more people have 3D printers and especially for us who go to clubhouses and who are at the clubhouse, who come to clubhouses, we have the tools which is the 3D printer, an internet connection where you get your designs and a little bit of filament and you can come up and create with your own speaker system easily and at minimal cost, a fraction of the price that you'll be able to buy one of these new from a shop. The last thing I would like to talk to you about today, which I'm really excited about because I love subs, I love bass, and I think the bass is really important in listening to music in general, um, and especially in maximizing space because it means that you can have small four inch drivers and with a sub, you round out that bottom end so you can hear all the frequencies in your music or in your movie or whatever it is that you want to listen to. But this is so cool because it's so small and it's called an isobaric chamber or an isobaric sub, which basically means it's, there's two, and they're on top of each other facing each other like that. And the top one's out of phase, which means it's negative to positive, positive to negative, cutting off the back of the other one. And the other one is wired normally, um, which comes out of the back of here and into the amp, positive and negative, comes out of here positive and negative normally as well. So it's a really interesting trick, and the, the trick of the isobaric chamber of the isobaric sub is designed again to save space. So instead of having one sub, you have to have about 50% bigger chamber to come up with the same frequency in sub sound. Um, when we do the isobaric trick, it means that we can have a smaller, a smaller receptacle or a smaller chamber to be able to produce that nice sub sound. I hope that this video and I hope that my passion project has inspired other people in the clubhouse world to jump on board and start building your own sound system because it really isn't that hard. The electronics and the wiring is pretty much as simple as it, as it can possibly get. Positive and negative wire on, into, into an ad. Um, I have, the last thing I'd like to say is that this, this one is possible, it's been designed so that you can put a little amp Bluetooth chip in uh, and you could also put a little battery in there so you could make your own portable Bluetooth battery powered um, mono speaker, which would sound pretty good. Um, I, I did want to do that for this fellowship, however I ran out of time, so I'm just going to use it um, as a passive speaker so I can put into the amp and just to basically just show how the different designs sound differently um, and things like that. So one day I will um, definitely get around to um, making it its own portable Bluetooth speaker with a battery like you see uh, so often these days. So yeah, that's my passion project for the Clubhouse Fellowship Program for 2022. I thoroughly enjoyed my time during doing this project and showing my young people here in Ballina and Lismore um, blowing their minds basically and also to adults who are around, colleagues and stuff that, that see that such an amazing sound system can be produced from a 3D printer and it's blown my mind as well because I've learned so much about it and I have just gained even more knowledge and um, way more passionate now about trying to make so many more and keep going with making speakers for everyone and I'm going to teach a lot of people about how to make their own speakers and I'm going to even hopefully design my own which will be my next step to see so what I can come up with. So cheers guys, thank you. I look forward to meeting some of you over in New Orleans very soon. Bye bye.